game, I've got uh, Kurt Hammer, the Tyree halfback. Welcome, Kurt. And I've also got Mick Anir, one of the world's tallest men, um, the varsity halfback. So, boys, just before we get on to those semi-finals, what do we think of the? Uh, what do you think of the Highlanders in the weekend? Good. It's disappointing for them. Unlucky, I guess, but I mean they had a good season, so big ups. And... We got smoked. Uh, we got smoked up front, obviously. But yeah. I thought. But I thought. I, I thought our backs. I thought our backs had another had another great game, didn't they? Well, after the first ten minutes, you thought it was sort of been going to be like the week before us. Yeah. But it yeah. Yeah. How good's Vic Tuck? Yeah, he's had a good, good season, eh? Yeah. Well, he was, well, he well, was, well, was good. It was really, I was really impressed. I mean, Ben Smith had another big game. That quick tip for half time, that yeah. drive. Yeah. It was ballsy yeah. stuff, wasn't it? I mean, at the end of the day, they basically called the, they called the, they could have easily gone to, gone to the break because they were only a few points down at that stage, but then they just kept on going and kept on going and scored that try. It was a great try. It was a great try. Yeah. Plenty of hands in that. Yeah. Right, boys, let's talk about the, um, the semi finals. Nick, I'll start with you. You guys were dead buried at 24, was it 24 8 at half time? Yeah, 10 or 20, 2014. Yeah, 2014. Yeah. So, um, you know, we wrote in the paper on Monday that Heidi's the best coach since Vic Cavanagh because he made the stirring speech at half time. I can't believe any of that. What did he actually say? Can you repeat any of that? Um, oh, do you let it swear? You, you can swear a wee bit. Nah. Um, yeah, boys sort of, we already knew what we had to do to win. I was telling the boys, you know, we've just got to be in a fight with 20 minutes to go. We'll, you know, we'll come good. Fight. We'll come good. We'll be right. We had a great first 10 minutes of the first half. Did everything right and then basically went to sleep. Um, so yeah, I mean Heidi gave the boys a good rev up, took all the uh, accolades from that, but yeah. I mean. You basically knew what you did, unless you, I mean, you know, I, I mean Southern are a team that, um, I don't think they're fit enough to be perfectly honest, and I, I don't really show, when you started spinning their ball in the last 20 minutes, they just couldn't keep up. Yeah, it was a bit of a worry, you know, we knew the game that we wanted to play was sort of dry, we the footy. Um, the day was a bit rainy. We were sort of lucky, to, lucky in our first game. It sort of turned to crap for the Tory boys, but mm. yeah, we sort of got lucky. There. So, Kurt, bring you in, mate. So, look, you thrashed. Listen, me, I was pretty much thrashed the Sharks, um, but it was it wasn't great, was it? I mean, the weather conditions weren't great. It was as dark and it was gloomy, and it just pissed down for the whole game. Yeah, it was, and I didn't know it was going to be that bad as well. As soon as it started pissing down in that warm up, it, was, it didn't look like it wanted to stop, but. Um, yeah. The foot conditions didn't seem too bad, apart from the cricket pitch. Obviously. Yeah, it wasn't heavy, it was just slippery, and the boys adjusted pretty well to it. I mean, yep. the game we played pretty well, just limited our errors, and that with the wet weather, it was it tightened up, and, and yeah, it was all right. Still scored another couple of nice tries. The, um, the tries that Burrow scored off a yeah. plan move, that was a good try. Yeah, set piece went pretty well, and that try, yeah, proved that the space opened right up. And, and what about the second try? The second try, who scored? Oh, the, the right handed God scored the second try out wide, even though apparently the boys are telling me he was in touch. No, no, I, comment? I, I don't, no comment. But right. I, 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 thought, say, I thought it was in. I, I think he's in. I thought it was from where I was. We were looking down on it, uh, yeah. and I thought he was in. But uh, a couple of guys said also it didn't really matter. Rob Wells, he's blind as well. He wouldn't have a clue. Blind as anything, anyway. So, yeah. yeah. Now, what about that fight? Tell me about tell me about the fight. So, what was going on in that fight? Was there much going on? Well, I was, I was, I was face down in, in the dirt. Right, you'd been. I, right. I'd been fairly stomped on. Yeah. Um, Unfairly stomped on. No, well, just they had a fair go, um, and then you know it was. They, they had my back, and uh, Kurt Webster the clean straight through. I think there was a wee, wee stomp uh, after the whistle, and that's sort of... Is that, is that what the penalty was for? I, I don't know what the penalty was actually really for, but there's... Well, the interesting thing from, work out. The interesting thing from my point of view, again, was the right-handed guy on the wing. He came storming yeah, yeah. in. Oh, it, now, it, he, he threw, what, four punches? Oh, right, oh, in, oh, right in front of the touch judge, and the touch judge basically just said, play on. Well, there's the, there was a lot of scuffles, so you can't yeah. really see properly yeah. uh, what had happened there, but... Yeah. There it was, yeah. right? Over. So look, back to you. What did you, what did you guys take out of the game? What did you take out of that game that you can use in the final? Oh, I mean, basically the boys taking great confidence out of it. You know, we know we can come from behind. We've done it all year. Got down, but I mean, the structure in place. Everyone knows what we're doing there, and yeah, I guess the belief that we can beat every team in this competition. Right. So. Um, what about you guys? Um, you know, everybody everybody was talking you up. I mean, I was certainly talking you up big time, let's be honest. Um, you, but you've beaten Dunedin, you've got that monkey off your back, you lost them once this year, lost them in that final last year. Look, you've got to be pretty confident going into the final there. Yeah, we are confident, but I mean, any final or any finals footies, it's the rest of the season sort of out the window, and it's whatever team fronts up on the day that's you know, probably going to get the results. So, 
Okay, so uh, I see Jimmy Dolman has been named as the ref. I thought it might have been Sheldon. Um, but yeah, Jimmy Dolman's been the... Is, what, are you th- what are your thoughts on Jimmy? Is he, I think he's probably the best, best around, is he? Always a bench. Yeah, super yeah, rugby junior. I don't know what he's been doing. Yeah, he's been super rugby junior. Is he doing... Su- the or oh, has he been doing some touch charges? Yeah, I think I'm like that. So. Right. So, he's, so okay, you're happy with him? They put the hard word down. NZO, you put the hard word down, give it to him. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, Do you think either him, him or what would, would you prefer him or Sheldon? Oh. You're happy with either one of those? So long as they don't have too you much. guys have won Adam Morrison. He's got three or four farms on the tour now that Adam Morrison. He's oh, just right. unbelievable. So, but Jimmy Dunn, what thoughts on Jimmy? Yeah, I'd be happy to have him, I guess. Yeah, yeah no drama with oh, that. Yeah, no, not at all. Okay, let's talk about your teams. Um, injuries, any injury concerns for you guys? No. So you'll be starting the same 15 as you had last week? Oh, I guess we'll find out. Well, you must know. <laughs> On that tomorrow, I suppose. What about you guys? Now you lost your big, uh, you lost a big lock at one stage. Old Mike, uh, Mike McKee, Mike McKee just, but, but just, a, just had a sore tail or something. Did he? Time or something, I think on the, on the thigh. So he he'll yeah. probably he'll probably start. Yeah. So you don't see any changes in your team either? Mm, no, not at this. What stage. about the only one possibly you could make? I'd imagine Quasi being back from Quasi back from yeah. Africa. Could he make it? He could, but we're not really sure. I don't, I don't really know. We hear there's a lot of boozing being done over the next couple of days. That might yeah, there might be a fair bit of boozing, but right. yeah, so whether he starts or sits on the bench or it's too young over, we'll see. Okay, so let's talk about then quickly. We'll, we want to come on to that form fifteen in a minute, but uh, let's talk about the anything special planned at Varsity for after the game when you guys win. Uh, Will you actually have anybody well, in the club rooms? I heard there's a few supporters uh, coming from around the country regrouping, so to speak. So that'd that's be, good. It'd be quite nice. There. When was your last final? 2010. 2010. So yes, un- uncharted territory for right. most of the boys in our team. So. Okay. And what about you guys? I hear Mike Case is order is organised a street parade. Yeah, I'd say so. There'll, there'll be a street be parade. parade. There'll, there'll be, be there'll be that. there'll be parties on for six or seven weeks. Yeah. So, but I mean, you guys, you're into this final thing. This is your what fourth final in a row. Yeah. You've won two of those. Lost that one last year. Um, yeah, yeah, what's the what's the mood out of Mosgiel like? A bit, the, people are pretty pumped. Yeah, pretty pumped. The whole community's uh, getting up at the moment, and it's the big talk around around town. So, and hopefully we can just do it for them. And the uh, both your teams, of course, are um, playing the senior B final. Yes, yeah. And you guys, are, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think your team's unbeaten. Unbeaten under the mighty Dale Jarden. Yep. He's found his niche. He's not a player. He's not a boxer. He's obviously a coach. Yeah, the new the new super coach. The new super coach. coach. So. And I hear there was drama on the weekend. We heard much about it. Apparently, the big Harbour Varsity B game big turned into a big massive, big, big, big brawl. Yeah, so the game was after the whistle, wasn't it? It was after the whistle, yeah. So, oh, any, I didn't see any, any so. actions? Any, any, any no, I don't. I, I hear there's been no complaints put into the rugby union. So Harbour boys just sort of wanted to try that, try that hand or something else. Yeah. So. And what about Tori? So Tori had been sort of a bit up and down on that grade, but they've got through to the final. I would have, I would have been predicting a Southern Varsity final on that, on that grade. Yeah. But those right. those boys must be going pretty well. Yeah, I think they did pretty well to beat Southern on the weekend, and it was I think it went into what they call overtime because it was a draw in that game. And oh, so you played extra time? Yeah, they played extra time. Ah, and okay. Come away with the win because so I think that was a pretty good, pretty pretty good result. result. Yeah. Right, boys, we better move on to this Form 15 now because but this is the Form 15 for the end of the year. So we've got a fair bit to do with this. We've got a fair bit to do with this form 15 this year, lads. I've uh, just temporarily uh, lost my place on the page. But um, without much further ado, we'll move on to that. So look, we've got our, we've got our team players here. We've got, uh, we'll start with the back, lads, will we? And you can sort of talk me through these. Kurt, on am uh, I thought you were pretty consistent all year for Tyro this year. Yeah. So we're putting you in at halfback. So Nick, you won't be happy with that, but it's probably not you. But you probably you were up there as well, but I felt you didn't play enough this year. No. And too many that. injuries. Yeah. So you're both happy with that selection? I'm going to go with Breeny at first five, because Breeny, in Breeny we trust. He's played pretty well and a pretty average Alambra Union side all year. Yeah. Uh, Brycey Morgan, I'm just putting in because he's weak. The try scoring machine. The try scoring machine. Yeah. yeah, he goes all right. Nice yeah. kid. Like his old man too, by the way. Big Lockie Moore, he's had a great year for Zingaree boys. You can't, you probably can't complain about that. No, no, not at all. Tay Warden, well, I think he's a superstar, this kid, isn't he? I think, is he the best midfield back in the target? Oh, he's getting there. I think he's there, isn't he? Kieran Moffat, got to put him in, got to put him in there somewhere. Played well for you guys again on Saturday, he just does a good job. Yeah. And at fullback, we're putting uh, Matt Fattis, even though he hasn't played a lot of fullback this year. He's not a bad player. 
Might have seen there on Thursday. Might have seen there. He started, he started there on the weekend, didn't he? Yeah. And then he came in to centre late in the game. Yeah. Right, so in the, in the forwards, lads, we've got uh, Big Nick McLennan. You'll be happy with him, and he's been, he's yeah. been pretty solid for you boys all year. Yeah, he wants it. Yeah. Sam Anderson here, though, well, you really can't complain about him. He was a bit, a, probably a bit underdone on the weekend, but not too bad. Oh, look, I'm only putting in Warren Moffat. He hasn't been on the form 15 all year, but he's just a good bloke, so I'll put him in. You happy with that? Yeah. Big Joe Ladder, he deserves his spot. Yeah, yeah. This one might like cold with a bit of an unsung hero for these uh, Alambra Union boys. Thought he played okay. Now, this is probably controversial, Charles Elton, but I picked him a couple of times this year. I think he's the best loose forward out at, uh, out at, out at Harbour. You Blake, well, you can't complain about him. He's been, he's been good. He was good again on Saturday against you guys. I think he was the best player on the paddock. And Sione Chu, I can't believe he's not near target team. So there it is. There's our Form 15. So I just want to remind everybody on our Form 15, if I just check my notes... That Form 15 will be up on our website tomorrow morning. Um, it'll be right next to this video that you'll see tonight. So, and go to that website and vote for your the People's Choice. The People's Choice competition will be up and running tomorrow morning. Um, so yeah, just get onto that. Go to odt.co.nz. Go to the video. It's just to the right of the video. And then start voting for your, for your favourite player. And we'll probably keep that voting open for a week or so. And... Uh, and then we, we will announce a winner, hopefully, late next week. We'll probably announce the winner at the uh, Club Rugby Player of the Year Awards. So, boys, look, I'd better just talk about that uh, little incident we've just had. Um, I tried to switch it off, but I didn't realise how cold that ice water was. <laughs> was. Um, but I got called out this week by a little dick, one little dick called Warren Alcock. Apparently there's a sort of a challenge going on, an ice bath challenge at the moment. And if you don't respond, you've got to pay $100 to child. I think it's the Cancer Society. Or if you do get, get the ice bath, you pay... Ten dollars. So I'd just like to thank Warren for that. And so, I, I, but that gives me the chance to call out a few other people. I'm calling out Lance Spitz and Bruce Carver from Harbour. I'm calling out Mike Casey and Gonzo from the Eels. Yeah. Make sure this happens this weekend, will you? Yeah, uh, Mike Kerr, of course, has just got to have a crack. He's just he is the worst marketing manager in New Zealand. He's, he's calling him out. I'm calling out Reggie because I don't like him for the Metro Committee. And I'm going to call out Heidi and Trevor Turner. I especially don't like Trevor Turner, so I'm calling him out as well. So Heidi and Trevor Turner as well. That's probably enough people to call out. So, boys, just to finish, how does this? How do you see this weekend going? Where do you guys win this game? Oh, I guess it's just putting in the full performance. Everyone having their their, their part, doing their part, and because both teams play a pretty uh, expensive and similar game, so it's making sure that we uh, we all do our part right. And, and you guys looked really good when you went out wide last week. You got some real pace on the wing. That little skinny white guy you brought on, um, Aiken, he's quite quick, isn't yeah, he? Sammy Aiken. Sammy Aiken. Sammy Aiken, yeah. Played really well when he came on. I thought he added some punch. So, do you think you've got you've got these guys out wide? Oh, uh, yeah, I'd say we've got them. Yeah, out wide, definitely. Um, I mean, it's going to be a, it's going to be a coin toss. They've obviously deserved their. They're probably favourites. They deserve that after the way they've played this uh, year. But I mean, it, it could be anything. Toss of a coin, knock on. Someone steps it up. You know, it's going to go down to it'll go down to one, go down to one little mistake. Like Look, that. I think I think you're right, lads. I think just to finish, just remember the ODT on Friday. We'll have the form 15 in the paper on Friday. Uh, remember the dreaded re report card will be in the ODT on Friday. Hate to say it, the Eels and the Sh and Basti will probably get pretty good marks because they're going so well right through their club. But just look out for that on Friday. And I'm just in this big game on the weekend, 2.30 Saturday afternoon, Varsity up against Tyree. Look, it's nearly too close to call, but at the end of the day, the Coyote never caught the roadrunner. So I'll leave it at that. And we'll talk to you again next year.